In a world where information seems to travel at the speed of light and traffic at a snail's pace, where the agenda of those at the helm doesn't always reflect the pressures on the streets where the rubber hits the road, where there's queue of issues needing to be interrogated in the name of speaking truth to power. Welcome to a place at the table. Where we set the agenda. Table the issues that matter to you. And invite you to take a seat at the table. A place at the table where we're set to check much more than the table. Welcome to a place at the table. As usual, we're set to roll out some topical issues. They can fast. So strap up, we're about to begin. But first, let's pause for a minute to honor the memory of Theresa Etam Henshaw, Kate's mother, who was laid to rest earlier this week. Thank you very much, everyone. Kate, you know our thoughts are with you. Right, I am first up, and I'll be speaking on channeling political discontent. Kate? Okay, thank you, everyone. Ah, I'll be drawing our attention to the real wealth. We keep saying health is wealth, but are we even listening? Well, Kate, we will keep talking until they listen and act. I will continue talking about decentralization. I'm also tackling the issue of anyhowness. Yes, that anyhowness that has become the signature in Nigeria. Max, maybe the person to answer the question, why are you so anyhow? <laughs> I mean, like, first, Kate, you know, condolences. Um, look, let's, I'm just coming on this show. You know, um, I'm exposing you, but. Uh, I, look, I'm not going to say anything, but you know what? Um, I, what I'll be talking about on this episode, we're going to be talking about same, similar to anyhowness, um, and is a phenomenon which is really which rankles um, one Nigerian, multiple identities. You're going to stay tuned for this one. Welcome, Emeka. It's good to you have you at the Thank table. You. Thank you so much. Welcome. Right. So pay close attention. I'd only be saying this once. Let the conversations begin. My people say he who has experienced the wrath of Shango, the god of thunder, will never join in denigrating Ulukoso. My monologue today is to the team in Nigerian YouTube Throng X, formerly known as Twitter, who have grown more recalcitrant in the way and manner they go on with ethnic bigotry in their bid to express their political discontent. Daily, an army of Nigerian youths hide behind the anonymity of social media to fan the embers of hatred among the major tribes of Nigeria. They goad, provoke, and widen the false lines of the nation. They forget that rough tackles never end well. Broken bones, clubs, and sticks are its unpopular consequences. And talking about consequences, the Rwandan genocide is 30 years old this month. It's developed from claims of superiority by one tribe over another, which degenerated into ethnic bigotry and hate. The Hundred Day War saw a million people slaughtered, and the phrase children of rape is the description for the 30,000 children born by women raped by militia men during that genocide. The film Hotel Rwanda told the story of that unfortunate war in parts. It was one of the most horrific wars in human history. And 54 years ago, this January, the Nigerian Civil War ended. The war started in July 6, 1967. Those who experienced the war as children do not have great tales to tell. Their stories are of anguish, and to borrow Fela's words, of sorrow, tears, and blood. And many of our Twitter warriors hadn't been born then. They do not understand the horrors of war, the mental torture, the uncertainty, the fear. We need to begin to deliberately halts the spread of hate in Nigeria, especially on X. The financiers of falsehood, the operators of troll farms should stop already. Nigerian youths are more than 70% of the population of this country. How many of you can jack back to other countries if Nigeria crumbles due to these constant drippings? 
recently at Nigeria's foremost documentary festival, IREP. I joined five other panelists, including Nigeria's immediate past minister of information, to talk about misinformation, disinformation in the age of political discontent. I'm closing with my exact words at that event, and it is that the deliberate distortions of Nigeria's history, the calculated erasure of Nigeria's past, and the demystification of our national heroes rob all of us progressively of our future. We must learn to channel our political discontent and displeasure in a more wholesome way. Let us stop beating the drums of war and start writing the future. I couldn't have said it any better, Funke. You know, uh, my advocacy last week sort of spoke to the strength in our diversity. But who started this discontent? It's not just the children on Twitter. They, like you said, they didn't experience war. I didn't experience war. But we have political rulers who have stoked the fire, who have sown the seeds. We have even essays to governors and people in government now and in the past who have boldly come out to sow seeds of discontent. It is left to us to throw those seeds away, dig them out of the soil and say, no, this is not who we are. I keep speaking to the time when I was serving. I served in Bauchi. We would go by road. We even fly in Nigeria Airways back then. Move freely. It was not a problem. I don't see the reason why now you say, oh, Igbo man, how's that man? Yoruba. No, we are one. And the sooner we learn to put it aside, even during elections, the better we'll be for it. Kate is completely right. I mean, we all seem to be doing okay. But when yeah. elections come, mm. everybody starts to remind, this person's from here, this person's mm. from here. Um, and yes, there's a tribal thing. But it's also when uh, I'm Igbo, I'm mm. from Enugu State, when elections come, you start, even we now atomize it down to the... Oh, to the from, locality. To the yeah. locality. Mm. Oh, this one is, um, is mm. from... Mm. This, one, this one is from this, this one mm. is from this. And then you find this atomization. So it's not just something about tribe. It's something that's become almost like a culture of that we use it, and very often we use it because of political, for politicians and for political interest. So I think that if we, things were to change, you know, the government or, who, or somebody has to make the politicians uh, pay a price for this. Yes. As, as, as you were saying off camera, um, you know, we need to name and shame them, no matter how high yes. in the office. So you know that this is a reflection of a poor education system, okay? People don't read history, history. Yep. you know? You don't need to experience something in order to know its consequences. So this is just a broken system that was put there by these same gatekeepers who now utilize it to, for their own purposes. And you know, it's easier to destroy than mm. to build. So it's just lighting the fire and then the chain reaction. So we really have a lot of work to reverse that trend because sowing that seed of discord was easy, but uprooting it now will take real nation building and sincerity. So you see, it is not just the young people. Unfortunately, it, it, it is it, not yeah. just the politicians. Unfortunately, Emeka, it is not just when doing politics. It is at every single sort of boundary, every line in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what I liked about what Andy said. When, when Andy said, look, you said the seed has been so. Andy said, and this is the thing, you don't need to know, to, yeah. to have lived yeah. in war yeah. mm -hmm. in yeah. order to learn if you are a child of history. And how do you become a child of history? How do you become a student of history? One thing and one thing only. If you care to be a good citizen, you will care about history. And literally, I will say this again. If you care about being a good citizen, you will care about history. Because like Andy rightly said, we now have to uproot. And how do we uproot? Like Emeka said, time to name and shame and actually punish those who do this. People are not learning history. Mm. In Rwanda... It's, good it's been taken out of the uh, curriculum, in, in Rwanda, Rwanda. No, it came back. It, it's brought it back, but yeah, there are no teachers. Look, in there Rwanda, no you cannot... If you ask a, a Rwandese person, what tribe are you? They will take offense exactly. immediately. Uh, you know the two major tribes, Tutsi yeah. and Hutu. Yeah. But if you ask any one of them, they will tell you, "I'm Rwandese, pure and simple. I'm not." They will be. They will literally take offense. I might even call the police on you because 
um, they outlawed this tribal Absolutely. identification. Mm. So you simply say I'm Rwandese. Absolutely. Um, and they, they, they've taken time to make sure they're celebrating the 30 years of the genocide. So people know they have got a genocide museum. We did, a lot of young people don't even Truth understand. Truth and reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't understand what yeah. war is. Mm. <laughs> and, and, you know, coming from the war. Southeast, we see, you know, people fanning the embers of war. Mm. We need this, we need that. We want to go our own way, mm. but we want to kill other people so we can... I mean, it's just... People need to recognize, and I think the, the, the elite and the political leaders, and even us in the media, yeah. we need to do a better job in sort of highlighting the consequences, mm. the immediate consequences of, of things like this. We really need to infuse something different into our education system and start you know, teaching citizenship also. I think we need um, a more aware set of citizens who know the implications or consequences of what they do. It's not enough to stay in one place and do atomization. I learned that now. Um, uh, and so I hope that on Twitter, on X, we'll be more considerate of this country that we are so very proud of. Look at our music, our entertainment, our movies. We're fantastic. Do we want everything to you know, go up in flames? Certainly not. Whereas pulling down can be a careless act, we need to be intentional when it comes to building up. Kate is up next, and she's also speaking about being intentional when it comes to making the right investment. Everything seems super important till you don't have your health. Then you realize the one thing you didn't prioritize is the most valuable thing you could have. A healthy man wants a thousand things, but the sick man only wants one. Cade Howell. Some of us are not serious about ourselves, about anything, about our health, about our general well-being. When we say fitness, they think, oh, wow, gym membership and the associated costs. Hear me, you have to move. Keep moving if you want to stay fit, healthy, and alive. Our bodies were designed to be active, not sedentary, because I know Nigerians, you want to sit in the car, sit in the office, sit in the kitchen if you can, and hand me the remote just over there. Our forefathers lived a more active lifestyle, did more walking from place to place, farming, fetching water from the stream, etc. Can we afford not to be active today? Your health is a priority, not an option. I'll repeat. I know Funke said something about saying it once. Your health is a priority, not an option. The WHO statistics for direct health care costs linked to and associated with inactivity for Nigeria are estimated at $109,758,156 billion per year and a projected cost of $1,207,339,716 million between 2020 and 2030. We haven't even begun to quantify the cost of lives lost due to the same inactivity. In a country where government investment in health is estimated at about 3%, a paltry 3%, considerably below the average expenditure of OECD countries, this says to me that if we don't invest in our health, you're on your own, or your is your case, pure and simple. What does this investment look like? In case you're still hesitating, simply regular routine with your exercise, walking regularly, irritating, take note, dancing, skipping, and eating. And after that, eat healthy. It doesn't stop you from enjoying the occasional treats here and there, Iriti, again, I know you love your chicken. Just eat in moderation and cut down on the salt and sugar. I see people under the bridge exercising, cement blocks, chest press. What's our excuse? I haven't even begun to see the need for women to stay fit. Women, the older we get, the more men, oh, pause, sets in. Another advocacy for another day. Can we afford not to stay fit and healthy without health? I promise you, you can't do anything. 
If you're in a hospital bed, forget your dreams, forget that target, forget that goal and the hustle. So please, let's just keep on moving. Don't stop. Yeah. Sounds like Seriously. sounds like that song, eh? yeah. Keep on moving, don't stop. Let's not come back. Let go, Nigeria. Those of you that are watching on them, um, on YouTube and everything, right? I hope you're watching us on YouTube. <laughs> if you follow Kate Henshaw, you must know that every video that she puts on her Instagram at Kate Henshaw, she does it to tension me. <laughs> And I have promised that one day I will revenge. <laughs> because the day we get to do is Please up, revenge. down. I must improve my chest. <laughs> you will all take it. But no, she's right. Kate is right. And honestly, um, I, I will testify to why Kate is right and why actually she had to point to me. Because as somebody who was doing a lot of work, um, walking and graduated to running and everything and stuff like that, I then suddenly stopped. If you want to distress, honestly, you have. I, I'm, I'm not saying this because Kate is here. We talk about this, and I'm always saying to her, "You're attentioning me." If you want to distress, yes, or sort out everything that's going on, yes. plan your day, go and exercise. Forget even whether I said to people, "There's a reason why I started exercising." It wasn't just sedentary. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a smoker. I smoke cigarettes. Fact. I don't do pretense. What happens with cigarettes? Cigarettes takes oxygen out of your blood. What happens with exercise? Exercise puts Please, it back yeah. in. Oh, simple. So you just got to find a reason. Two reasons, 10 reasons, one reason. So Kate is right. Health is wealth, but even more so, moving is the only solution. It is. I got into the culture of, 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 of walking in the morning and probably the day I don't walk in the morning, I walk at night so that I you know, just put a closure to whatever I've done that day or I start the day thinking through as I walk. Walking is a great way to exercise. You don't have to run if you can't, but just walk. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, it's just fine. Because again, it gives you a feel-good feeling. You know, that feel-good feeling helps you to, you know, cope with all that is happening in Nigeria. You know, before you think of uh, how much am I going to buy chicken. I feel like, I think what, what Kate said that is, actually super instructive um, it's that this investment in health and mm. it doesn't really require that much money at it's all no. it's just moving yeah you know i think if you With put that in you. perspective it's just yeah. you moving you know um i these days because of the work i do a pretty sedentary yeah. i'm sitting yeah. in the office every day but um my my staff actually these days they think i'm going mad because i walk around the building That's intentionally intentionally and they're just like uh, boss, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it's good. Um, I just think that uh, the, the state, the local government, um, need to do a few more things. Um, I see them trying, but I think that... Because um, if you go to Rio mm. in Brazil, for example, or, you know, you, you see um, areas mm. where just, just in parks, literally yeah. every corner, yeah. they have like a little where you can you know, um, walk yeah. around, um, Go and the way out. that our streets are even yeah. designed, the streets are designed so you can walk. So the way we design right? our cities um, has to take cognizance Change, of this. Thing. So, you know, it's important that we design our cities and um, with these things in mind. Kate, I think this is about the most important advocacy. Maybe I'm biased because of my background. I'm a public health person. Mm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, you see, you mentioned the investment in health and OECD design. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we are promoting universal health coverage, what we tell people is that right now, many Nigerians or Africans are one sickness away from poverty. Yeah. Okay. Mm. How many superstars mm. we see on Hollywood reduced to begging mm. for mm. hospital bills mm. and all that? Now, mm. this is an investment that will really cost you nothing. You know, I was smiling when you mentioned the roads, local mm. government, Take the three percent she mentioned and know that they are not coming to build any roads, pavements mm. for you. Mm. Nelson Mandela, if you read his book, Long Walk to Freedom, his tiny cell in prison made sure he exercised every yes. day. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well. So outside. let's That's do this be. investment. For once, let's forget government and mm. invest in ourselves to make sure that we don't get to a point where we are now begging. This one, Nigerians, concerns you and I. So let's get serious about our health, please, and our well-being. 
Next up is Andy and he's up and doing. Kate, as I mentioned, I play tennis, but today I'm not hitting tennis balls. I will be hitting at a system that does not promote productivity and inadvertently promotes insecurity. A system that has led to our resources being described as a curse. Decentralization. In Nigeria, the federal government is dependent on oil revenues to function, creating a dangerous addiction. Dangerous because FG holds on to rights to almost all resources apart from agriculture. Many countries depend mainly on agriculture and they fare well. Not subsistence farming, but mechanized agriculture approached as a science and a business. But how can agriculture develop? Where leaders taxed with creating employment and other economic opportunities for citizens have no real interest in agriculture. Who wants to spend time investing in mid to long term agricultural projects? when all that is required is to wait for allocations from the federal government. The federal government itself is not ready to seek control of crude oil, as it will mean real work and vision to survive in office. It serves selfish politicians better to allow international oil companies drill the oil, pay royalties, and make as much money as they can during their tenures. While it is not feasible to change the system overnight, steps must be taken to tie monthly allocations directly to developmental projects with the aim of getting states to develop and control their resources with the overarching aim of weaning states off this dependent on crude oil. This will be a necessary but bitter pill to swallow. This will also ensure that citizens will vote candidates who can create enabling environment for businesses and economic growth in their states. Any other arrangement is simply a race to the government house or ASO rock to await monthly allocations from crude oil to the benefits of the elites. I was talking about Socrates earlier. I'm quoting him again. He said, no physician, insofar as he is a physician, considers his own good in what he prescribes, but the good of his patient. For the true physician is also a true a ruler, having the human body as a subject and is not a mere money maker. There is no one in any rule who, insofar as he is a ruler, considers or enjoys what is for his own interest, but always what is for the interest of his subject. To that he looks, and that alone he considers in everything which he says and does. That was from Plato's Republic. What's the bottom line? You aren't a leader if you are only looking out to your interest and if you are only out to make money. I think the sooner the oil wells dry up, <laughs> the better will be for, for it, really, because there are other sources of income facing Nigeria, the government as a whole. So much. I mean, we are facing food insecurity. How do we solve that? We can't, the farmers can't go to the farm, but we'll rather put 10, 10K in people's accounts and say, oh, we're trying to help them solve insecurity. Well, we'll rather do a a market where you can get things at 20%. How about getting a surplus of products, food, you know, to the tables of Nigerians, to the markets? You have to provide security so that the farmers can farm. You have to make fertilizer affordable for them so that they can farm. I mean, it stands to reason that first we have to sort out the root causes of whatever is causing all of this before we can even talk about anything else. You don't find the root cause. You're not going to find a solution. And this is, this is a critical issue uh, and, and it's at the foundation of why Nigeria has consistently failed to live up to its, its true potentials and energy. It's a structure, you know, um, you know, it's like building a house. If your foundation is faulty, everything is, you know, as I think we've, we've often argued that it's almost as if Nigeria uh, is designed Perhaps not to fail, but not to, to, say to fail, <laughs> but it's perhaps okay. not to be successful mm -hmm. in a in a way. And this is at the heart of it. This whole every power sits in in, in, one, in place. one place. Yes. In 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 um, you know, we've taken uh, military 
regime kind of mentality into democracy. In fact, if you, if you look at some of the things that have happened whether within the judiciary, whether in the National Assembly, um, you will find that, in a way, it appears that Nigerians enjoyed some, some more liberty in, in some ways. Um, during military during, time. Because, I mean, look, for example, um, I, work as, I work in the media as a, as, a, as a media entrepreneur, as a journalist. Um, it was the military that gave us uh, private broadcasting, yeah. enabled private yes, broadcasting. Yes, regulation. Yes, yes. IBB. They had their own excesses. I mean, IBB and the people and the yeah. subsequent regimes, Abacha and so on. Um, but the, the judiciary, they could say things. Yes. They were, you know, they had the... Relatively, relatively free. free. They could say things and damn the things. Yeah, I'm telling you. Relatively, ask, yes. ask any, you know, I agree. You know they're here at that time. Yeah. They tell you. We do it. Okay, she just came from yeah, abroad. Came from abroad. <laughs> you have been yeah, here. Yeah, we've been here. Yeah, we've yeah. been here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but this this is very important because every resource sort of flows to this, and then you get this. Come and take your and piece else, of the yeah. cake, and and mm. it just does. It makes us lazy. It makes us extremely lazy. I mean, I've I've had the opportunity to tour Southwest Nigeria, and it beats me hollow. How do you have vast lands? Mm uncultivated all over so the place so and people are hungry in contrast if you travel to south africa you see cultivated farms you see farms farms in rows all over the place what is wrong with us i know that the afdb has been giving us money upon money upon money what are we doing with this cash what, what are, are we doing? doing? What kind of investment? Every day you hear, agree this, agree that. that. Result is what we're looking for. People are hungry. Yeah. So whatever it is they're doing in agriculture in Nigeria, we don't understand why at the end of the day, we're still hungry as a people. Tell me why somebody in, in Oshun, Lagos, or your, will travel to Benue to go and buy yam. What is wrong with your arable land here? What are you doing? Doing all right, sir. We can't continue like this. We need the government at the three tiers to tell us what they're doing precisely about agriculture. You know, as you were talking, Emeka, when you went back to the six and everything, I remember the cocoa, the nuts. I remember when I was time when we were known the, for farming. The pyramids. You know, the pyramids, thank you. I remember the whole sort of, you know, there used to be a Yoruba, there used to be a Yoruba, um, Poem that children used to sing in school, which I believe was the existence. And the pride you took in, in the whole agriculture yes. thing and the fact yes. that you had to eat from the land and all of that stuff. Yes. I, and, and, and then it brought me back onto what you were saying. We have to, there are cash crops. Right. right, and you have to separate it. You have to separate all of that. The agriculture is happening slowly but surely, but not fast enough. AFDB Akimomi, mm -hmm. what's his name? Additional at this. Additional Akim, yeah. Akimomi is doing more and more. But what we forget is that when you have neglected to plow the fields for decades, to you know, how then do you expect to start cashing? from the crops, that the seeds that you've just only started to install. So there's an aspect of me that says, you know what, let's be a little bit more patient. It's not about getting rid of oil. We have now learned that we can no longer depend, just depend on oil. Have we we got, yes, we have. We got excited about oil, doing go on, doing all of that, but it's now taught us that, hang on a minute, you might have all the oil you want, but oil can also be the suicide, as Ghana is finding, Ghana is discovering it can also be the suicide to your economy. There are other minerals we have, but the governors will tell you because on the exclusive list, they cannot do anything about it. Yeah. But you see, agriculture, there will never be incentive for a leader, the kind of the ones we have, rulers, as Kate calls them, to come into government and is receiving billions of naira every month as subvention mm. and put it into agriculture gotcha. that he will not reap in quotes. Mm until his tenure is over. That's mm. the point. That's why we're saying, unless we tie those subventions maybe directly to uh, developmental projects and win off of the, off the oil, of yes. course, there will have to be some constitutional issues. Now, talking about employment and all that, 51% of Nigerians, one of the highest in the world, really, are employed by agriculture. But what she said is subsistence farming. 
Do we know that even the biggest countries that we think in the world, that you would think is technology and what that gives them money, the U.S. is the largest exporter of food in the world, followed by the Netherlands. That's why the people eat Brazil. bad food. You understand? <laughs> countries that already have other sources of income wow. are not joking with agriculture. I will <sighs> keep talking about decentralization. The next to be decentralizing the police. But I chose to start with economics so that people will understand that there are intricate and necessary relationships between economics and security. It's not only about guns. Now I've finished my lecture. It's over to you, Iret. <laughs> Lecture and they cannot teach me nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be telephone too. Uh, Olu Ande, thank you so much. I'm tempted to give a lecture, but no, I don't do lectures. I just say it exactly as it is. Mr. Olubumitu Jojo, this is to you. I'm talking about the gigantic cost of Nigeria's anyhowness. So, on Sunday, April 7th, late afternoon, the federal government declared Tuesday and Wednesday public holidays for the Muslim Eid el fitri celebrations to mark the end of the 30 days of Ramadan. By Monday, meetings would have been rescheduled, plans reorganized, and of course, organizations around the country would mirror FG's declaration by obliging their staff to observe the same two days as public holidays. Then came Tuesday morning. In a statement that can only be described as, oh, by the way, the permanent secretary, Minister, Ministry of Interior, informed us, yes, the country, that the Minister of Interior, Mr. Olubumi Tsunjiojo, had approved Thursday as an additional public holiday. For these years, it will future. Why the extra day, you might ask? Well, I could expense oxygen in an attempt to explain, to help you understand and make sense of it, or I could just default to my preferred position and just say it as it is. So honestly speaking, it is my strong belief that they just don't care. You see, Bumi Tunji Ojo knows, just as you and I know, that none of these colleagues will be on seat till Monday. So in truth, the extra public holiday is neither here nor there. A whole week, gone. Officially in Nigeria, there are 16 scheduled public holidays in any given year. Most of these public holidays are Christian and Muslim holidays. So how do we still get it wrong, despite having one of the highest number of public holidays in the world? So this year, we now have at least 17. That's assuming there won't be any more cock-ups by the end of this year. This is so very, very wrong. How hard can it be to confirm the date of Muslim religious celebrations, especially in this age of technology, where there are apps available that can estimate these holidays? And then all that would need to happen is to give a call to the Sultan of Sokoto and Shikina, all is confirmed. We all know this is not the first time they've done this to us. Our government's inability to administer such basic ubiquitous information accurately is symptomatic of Nigeria's chaotic landscape. But of course, no one will be punished, queried, or even told off. It will happen again, as it did during Buhari's first term in office. Given the many negative economic indices this administration is allegedly working hard to rectify. Surely, a lackadaisical additional public holiday should be the last gift from the Trojan horse, wouldn't you say? So let me give you a small illustration of the value of Ogatunji's dash, Mekunatik. Using a similar methodology to that used by SBM Intelligence to estimate the cost of election postponement in 2019, Let's estimate the cost of, an ex of the extra public holiday we have this year. According to Google, Nigeria's 2022 GDP of 472 
$1.6 billion suggest a potential economic income of approximately $1.29 billion. Dollars. Dollars, not naira. How do you get that? You take $472.6 billion and you divide that by 365 days and what you get is 1.29 GDP per day. So, technically, the value of Minister Olubumi Ojo's supreme nonchalance and wasteful generosity is a gigantic 1.2 billion USD. So you see, the next time you ask yourself, why is Nigeria such an anyhow honest country? Look no further than Abuja. Yes, to those elected and appointed government officials whose job it is to oversee the structure of the country and nurture her to its optimum potential, but instead would rather give an additional public holiday. Happy Eid of Victory. Assalamu alaikum to my Muslim sisters and brothers. Proverbs 24, uh -huh. 33 to 34, oh, yeah, the New Living Translation. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty <laughs> will bounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an arm robber. Girl, I end my there, post. There, 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 there. There. No more to say. No I, more to I, say. You know, Next person. You see, processes that require us to stretch our imagination, yes. stretch. Uh, you see, ah, oh, okay, you know that thing, yeah. No, no, uh, no, walk here. Nah, Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria, you know. No, so yeah. we're always looking for excuses for the mm. for the options out of hard decisions. And I and I think this is symptomatic of this. So this thing present they made a mis miscalculation of when the when you know you have to see the moon. Mm. But like you said, if a little bit of technology will show you. Yes. And they made a miscalculation, and because you already said Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, so instead of going back and saying, okay, let's do Thursday, when, Wednesday, Thursday, 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 Thursday yeah. we need to be more serious about uh, building a country that uh, prioritizes work, um, and in, it's from work that yes. we build a, a you know economic a viable country and a viable future. Absolutely. This particular anyhowness, it ain't working. It's not working. You know, I okay. remember how I reacted to that extra day. I went like, huh. What's going to happen to all the meetings planned? You know? So it's costing us something. It's not just uh, go home, just enjoy. What are we even enjoying? Enjoy. Chicken is expensive. I keep saying chicken because I like chicken. You love chicken. It's fish. It's fish. fish. And everything. Gary. So a lot of people who you even gave this holiday to couldn't cook anything. Mm. So instead of giving us more holidays, why don't you... Help us enjoy the ones we already have by making food available. People are hungry. I was somewhere yesterday and the lady said, look, when we break in the evening, the usual fruits and plenty of food that we use, we don't have, I just take water. My heart broke. This happens only once a year, right? And it is something that is very significant to the Muslims. The process of, maybe I know this because I have an understanding of the process of sighting the moon and all Darling, that. Darling, my Muslim no, no, name no, no, is no, Sekinat. Don't worry, don't worry. Let, me, let me land there. Eh? It has nothing to do with technology. In fact, you have some sex saying there is, they saw the moon and are doing idil fitri today. Some other sex will say no. We haven't because it is not... <laughs> Let me, you yeah, are interrupting oh, no, yeah. it is, I it's, yeah, it is not, shaking my head. you know, <laughs> in, 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 when you are dealing with uh, people's beliefs and cultures, and as well as any other thing, processes are as important as the outcomes, right? It's not enough to say you use the tech app to, unless you are saying it's a sultan that will use that tech app to see it, because you are not even permitted to, you, you don't have the mandate to say you know, you understand what I'm saying? There are processes to these things. And that is why I said there are issues around religious beliefs and cultures. As I said, 
So I don't want to say that it is. Because I have to debunk everything you've said. No, you cannot debunk everything, especially about the processes. I absolutely can. There are processes. No, there are processes you might not know. <laughs> One hundred thousand naira, mm. and I will debunk it for you. So let me make. Stop I told with you all the sex. Last. I told you. Stop with all the sex. This is not about sex. With all the what? Sex. 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 No, 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 no. You talk but about me. You said no, there were don't me. sex. Yeah, but don't Yeah, but that's what I said. No, no, no. That's, that's, what said. that's what you said. Yeah, you said that there was different the Muslim sex. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm saying stop with all the sex. Like I said, my name. And you can't cut me down because I'm now Kifiri, but doesn't, I don't do religion. I had no choice. I was born into a Muslim family. All right? Many Elijahs in my family, so don't even try that. If I read kill for you now, you will bow. So move that aside. So <laughs> when there is an app, right, even forget, before we had technology, in the old days, they would look at the moon, would they not? Before meteorology, they would look at the moon. It Who are they? Time. Our Who? forefathers. Who are wait, they? Wait, There's our, a specific person with a mandate. Please stop this. No. Uh, there is no There specific. is. Oh my God, Andy, will you stop this consistent need to argue what you don't know? Yeah, Permit see, me to No, think. I will not tell no, that one. You can't tell me I don't know. You do not know. You don't know. Yes, I am. I'm an No, you are not. You don't say you don't do religion. You are not. I was born into a Muslim family. That doesn't mean anything. You don't say you don't do religion. So you are not a Muslim. You do not listen. I am exhausted. Why fly? Because you insist. You are not a Muslim leader. You said you asked me to let you finish. And I have to debunk everything you're saying. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when I talked about an app, and I do listen to my advocacy, you would have heard me say, there is an app that can predict this, and all you would then have to do is what? Is to call the Sultan of Sokoto to confirm. Oh, yes, so, I already so. said that that's one. Number one. Number two is, what the problem is, was that on but Sunday... But it's very important Andy, to think you can you call the Sultan of Sokoto. That is even my main issue. She's not the one that will call, call now. Sultan, the ministry calls the Sultan of Sokoto. That, that is what Actually, they do. It is done. the Sultan of Sokoto. Will you stop arguing blindly? It is the Sultan... Stop this. It is the Sultan of Sokoto. You Sultan. can make your point stop without me. making but personal... No, 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 no. You cannot tell me I'm arguing blindly. You can not... I will not take it. I say I will well, not. Take no, it. I will it not. You, you, are I will not. you cannot right. tell me I'm arguing blindly. You are arguing blindly because I will not the take it in a team. That informs the minister. <laughs> but you don't call him. They do call him. I, I heard That's something on ACL. You don't need to hear it. Hold on. I heard something on ACL. Because I watch NTA News also. Just to keep it up. And I was. I was surprised that there are moon sighting committees. Of course mm -hmm. there are. Will you please let me finish, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do not need yes. you to confirm but, what I know. Mm -hmm. Andy, please stop and mm -hmm. let me finish. Sorry. Look, uh, you will is... make your oh point, but God. do not refer to me directly in your statements like you're arguing blindly. That's my point. You are so arguing blindly. Make, me. You make right. your yes, point, right. but do not you tell me. So blindly. I will not take that. In that case, I, I will not. I don't care whether you take it. I'm not. No, I will not. You will not post it from there. Make your point. I Make your point there. without you telling me I'm arguing, arguing blindly. blindly. So I, I'm what not arguing blindly. Blind. What do you know? You don't know she either. Just say you have no faith. Can we have a compromise? Can we have a compromise? No, she can make a point, but she can not directly tell me. Can we have a compromise? Can we have a compromise? I'm telling you. I'm arguing. Make your point. I am making my point. And I'm telling you, and I repeat, they do contact the Sultan of Sokoto. It is the Sultan of Sokoto that actually tells them, yes, so, am I wrong? Yes, that's the that is a fact, that is the process, right? That's number two. Number three is that the Sultan of Sokoto is actually in, 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 um, in contact with Saudi Arabia. Happy Eid al-Fitri, everyone. Great you can all sit here and let me down and talk down on me and want me to sit down and listen. Is it a two-hour show? Let's uh. breathe. This is why I say exercise. You can go now. You do not have to be here. You know, pent up, uh, 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 emotions. Breathe. Uh, everybody I love this show already. I love this yes. show already. Yes, I love <laughs> So you see, it isn't just about an app. It is about the fact that there is a process. How does that process work? 
the Ministry of Interior calls the Sultan of Sokoto. The Sultan of Sokoto is in touch with Saudi Arabia, and boom, the holiday is declared. The big issue we have here is that it was declared prematurely on Sunday. So if no one else is going to hold the government accountable, I will certainly make it an option. Or shall I say, make it my job to always hold them accountable. So my, my advocacy for this week is on one Nigerian, multiple identities. Only last week, uh, I think we all read a post on Twitter, mm -hmm. or X, that the federal government um, had plans to reintroduce a new national ID card system, which was later confirmed um, actually by an official statement from the spokesperson of the National Identity Management uh, Commission, is that according to the statement, the federal government, in collaboration um, with the CBN, the Interbank Settlement uh, System, NIBS, as it's called, um, has launched, I'm quoting them now, has launched an in innovative identity solution with payment functionality. Now, the problem with this, and I call this a manufactured problem, is that it's a repeat of an old problem, which was equally not well constructed. And as it wasn't well constructed, it crumbled. Or perhaps, as we see in this case, it was put in the coma and is about to be resurrected anew. As you can see, I have, you know, the old was. card uh, from, this is from 20, 2014, oh. the NMIC card. And it had the, as you can see, MasterCard payment option. Mm. Um, so I registered for this in 2013. I got this um, a couple of months later um, in 2014. Um, with great fanfare, in fact, I remember correctly, I think it was a former president, uh, Jonathan, who launched this card at uh, Aso, Aso Rock. And this card, was, it was claimed that it could do anything. You could um, have your banking statement, and it would be a credit card, it would be a debit card. Um, for me, I was not that curious to know how this would work, so I never, used, I never used the card. I didn't even attempt to put it in an ATM, but I got all that information. Um, even then, though, a lot of people thought it was very unwise um, to, to have a national ID card system that, especially being run by a foreign financial institution yes. that had all your... Financial, financial information. But that's not even the main thing. For me, it's that this country is special. At this time, uh, we all know, some of us here now, uh, we have multiple agencies. Uh, just to give you an example, if you were to land, uh, Nigerian airports is the only country in the world that I've been to so far, uh, where you land, your passport will see a DSS officer, I see an immigration officer in the same space. Why that is the case, I, I don't know. So now we have... A Nigerian who has, uh, you have your NIN, you have your international passport, you have your voter's card, you have your driver's license, and now we're about to have a new NIMC card. And even then, in some states, we have state tax ID cards, residency cards, indigent card for local government, and, and so on. But like a friend asked me when, you know, I was debating, put, doing this advocacy, he says, what, what is the business of NMIC with banking? Now, I read somewhere that the new card could easily be used for direct cash transfers to the poor. However, and this is the problem, over the years, our Nigerian security system has demonstrated little or no confidence in the ability to protect citizens' data. We've seen this numerous times. So with previous incidents of identity theft due to the ease which cybersecurity has been hacked, how can we trust that this system, this new system that's coming into place, um, that wants to introduce a new identity card with your, all your banking information and it will be secure. And that's really the challenge, that with one card, if you have it, all your financials, if it's hacked, uh, and then your entire life is hacked. I agree that we're a special nation. We're special in the backward region. Because, yeah, because you, these people who come up with these ideas, no, not ideas, this Policy. Mirage, is it policies? It's not policies that are better. Things that hallucinating uh, 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 thoughts. They go abroad. They see you need only one card. And even with all these uh, multiple uh, cards, you counted like maybe 10 or 12. We're still getting nowhere with social welfare for anyone. 
for no one. We are a schizophrenic nation. At every point in time, we are be asked to go and line up and register for something. Look at the one that the, the bank said you have to harmonize. We did mean which year. They said, come again to leave your name to your baby. You have everything. When we were traveling during COVID, all you have to do, you, you now use your COVID card. That one is hanging there. We have also, and then you now put MasterCard. What's MasterCard's own inside our ID card? I've not seen any country where there's a bank or financial institution emblazoned, making sure that you must use MasterCard. Some money has passed, and I'm telling you that somebody is ripping from it. The greed is too much. The selfishness, selfishness is too much. The throats are too wide. Ooh, we need to stop them. We need to seize, asphyxiate. Oh, God. Asphyxiate, <laughs> strangle the, the, the way the air is coming to, to, to fuel this greed. It's too much. What is it? Each administration comes up with something that makes the people queue up, suffer, line up, and after a while, they will leave it. Somebody else come, wants to join everybody. Go and Why? Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? I'm tired. I'm so sorry. Kate, were you teaching my answer? What would I talk about? I'm so sorry. No, I'm angry. angry. Yeah, no, you have spoken everything I wanted to say, but let me just say. So I, I, I completely agree with you, Emeka, and you know you are talking about identity theft. That's even for the sophisticated, you sophisticated people. My girls is more of what Kate is saying. Like we have passport, ID card, voter's card. Uh, then what was driving me crazy, you mentioned it. They now called us to come and link to. Link, we like, should link you it. You have all these things in one government, right? Like why do you need to keep calling us to come back? Then what even pains me the most now is that, did you hear how much... They are using to try and get a register in humanitarian affairs to now give people social welfare. When you mentioned social welfare, it came to my head. Like, despite all these cards and registrations we've been doing, they cannot say, okay, something happened in a community no. in Area X. Let's use this data. No. They will create a, yeah, a committee to go and start looking for new registers to go and register. <laughs> so, I rest my case, but I think we don't need to harmonize. Mm. That's just the way to go. You know, um, <laughs> If you look at the pattern of governance in Nigeria, you see that every government in recent times finds a reason to punish us, <laughs> to tell us to go and queue endlessly and start seeking favors from X, Y, and Z in some office to get some card. Mm. There was a government that came with BVN. Then another one came with NIN. Mm. And I'm telling you the truth. A day before this people, this government came out with this particular one, I thought to myself, hmm, these people are going to make us kill again very soon. Voila! Next day, I brought you to I'm intuitive, <laughs> to be honest. Mm. So I said to myself, which one is this again? Why do we need to use our ID card to make transactions? What for? And Believe me, Kate, you said something. Where else is it done in the world? No way. Now we've come again with this. We should just think about people's welfare. They don't think. I'm not one of those people that believes that this government or any government or Nigeria, whoever, which government is intentionally trying to, what did you say, make us suffer or anything? I don't. I just think what happens is incompetence over incompetence over incompetence literally becomes suffering over suffering over suffering over suffering. Right? And the next one comes in and says they want, to, they want to fix the incompetence of the last one. So they start the same process all over again. Forgetting that you've actually already put the people through what Kate says, queuing, 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 and more queuing. But I'm, I, I want to get away from that sort of complaint space and go to really hone in on what Emeka is talking about, which is data, right? Fundamentally, the issue here is data, how data is collected, how data is management, managed rather, and what we do with it. And the immense and absolutely critical importance of data security, mm -hmm. right? In a way that it is not taken seriously in this country. I think that's what yeah. your, your advocacy was about. And so, so if I go back, when you think about data, you know, as I said, I used to work in technology, right? Data. Data is money. 
Data is civic management. Mm -hmm. Data is civic planning. Data is economy. Data is how you look after the vulnerable yes. in the society. Yes. Data, data, data. But what does Nigeria do wrong? None of the databases have share. been, yeah. no, they haven't been, and what's the word we use in general? Harmonized. 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 Harmonized, thank you. And therein lies the problem. That's why. We are all I'm correct done. in the sense I'm that we, we, share, we, we share the burden and mm. we deal with the burden mm. of the incompetence and, you know, and, and just stupidity, mm. let's mm. put it that way. Um, because I think that the NMIC, NIMSI as, as mm. we call NIMSI. them, should, as identity management commission, should be able to manage, even voters card, manage everything. Everybody. Request for voters card database from INEC, yes. request for uh, BVN, manage everything. But give us assurances that our, sec our data is secure. See. That's the most important. That's it. And as you can oh. see, oh, I'm so out of breath. As you can see, <laughs> <laughs> our accountability is a key focus of our discussions at the table. Join us again, same time next week, same channel, when we will lay out fresh topical issues for interrogation. Till then, it's goodbye from all of us. That's bye. Like the British will say. What time's your flight? 3.30, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> 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 Send me this for the show. Come, come. You I can't guys, stand up. Yeah, I can't stand up. 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 I can't stand